Hi, have you heard about Bitcoin? Not Bitcoin, but Bipcoin. Bravo, India, Papa, coin. Bipcoin is a new cryptocurrency that you can start mining today for free on ordinary computers. Unlike most altcoins, Bipcoin is not a clone of Bitcoin. Bipcoin is based on entirely new, more recent, and better code called CryptoNote. So unlike Bitcoin, Bipcoin has truly untraceable transactions, does not require specialized mining rigs, and has adaptive limits. Plus, Bipcoin is the only cryptocurrency covered by the Bipcot no government license. This allows use and reuse by anyone except governments and government agents. If you're still kicking yourself in the head for not getting in on the ground floor of Bitcoin, start mining, using, and trading Bipcoin today. Not a guarantee. Mining Bipcoin costs you nothing but the electricity to run your computer. And we already take Bipcoin for stickers and buttons. Go to Bipcoin.org. That's Bipcoin.org. Once again, that's Bravo India Papa Coin.org. I've been getting called out for, like, with our show. Uh, Dave, I don't even know if you've listened to it at all, but we really try to be offensive uh, <laughs> on purpose. Seeds of Liberty. 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 Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 94th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more about this at BIPCOT.org. So we are back again. I am Jeremy. I am here as joined as always with by Dave. And this week we have Aaron Thompson from liberty lampoon hey aaron thanks for stopping by man no problem it's good to be here this is the uh first other show that i've that i've been on i've never been on anybody else's show before really this is nice yeah technically we we, we almost had a show start out with you a a, a few years ago or maybe a year and a half back no that's another aaron thompson (laughs) oh it's another aaron thompson holy crap completely different aaron thompson dave uh, Holy crap! We yeah, we actually we actually came Small across world. Uh, another. Wasn't he from Oklahoma too? Yeah, I could swear this guy was from Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, he was. Uh, his name's Aaron I Thompson, actually... <laughs> and he's a former cop and military member. Oh, at, turned voolunteerist. Uh, yeah, I I actually saw. I think the probably you kind of sound guy, like him too. He I, it... commented on something that I had commented on. And I thought that my phone had been hacked because I was like, I did not post that comment just now. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then I clicked on it. I was like, oh, there's another Aaron Thompson who's into volunteering. My apologies, Aaron. <laughs> but, yeah. I, but you can understand my confusion. Oh, yes. no. I, yeah, I, 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 I guess I forgot to clear, clear that up for you, Dave. But, that, but yeah, I, like I said, I could swear. I remember him being from the Midwest type area. And for some reason, Oklahoma sticks in my head. And that would just be a ridiculously small world. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if not only did you have the same name, you were both, you know, you were both. Might have been North Carolina. I could be wrong. I don't know. But anyway, well, but that was the confusion because we had him <laughs> lined up to do our Force the Freedom podcast that just never got off the ground. Um, right. But no, this is a different Aaron Thompson, Dave. He does. He's one of the co-hosts of Liberty Lampoon and your which was which is what uh, you guys kind of shifted formats, I guess. What did you used to do? Was it Shotgun News? Was it the old one? Uh, the Shotguns Report, oh, which yes. basically that was like uh, if I kind of scrubbed the Internet of all of those. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Didn't because- we, don't, don't, mean to, don't mean to open up old. Wounds. You pulled a Hillary Clinton. Yeah, uh, well, the reason why was because it was literally me and my co-host kind of like turning over the ideas uh, that we now embrace, you know, kind of like working towards uh, where we are now. You get what I mean? Like, there's a lot of content on those that <laughs> that I don't want to see the light of day oh. ever again. <laughs> so, I have some stuff like that out there as well, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. I have some... I mean, I, I probably have just gobs and gobs of stuff on the internet that I, I, when I was in a sophomore in high school, I thought that I wanted to be a Christian rapper. So, uh, I recorded Ooh. some stuff and put it on the internet and, uh, That's it rough. wasn't bad, but I'd rather no one ever hear it ever. So <laughs> you know. I have to set a bounty out for that. If somebody can yeah. find it. 
I think it's on Acid Planet. I think there's something on. It's called Acid Planet. I think I have something on there. Christian rap, a white Christian rapper. Got it, man. That's that's wild. Yeah. Not anymore. Don't <laughs> don't put that evil on me now. So uh, I'd, I'd rather not talk about that. Anymore. I don't know why I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, hey. Well, thanks just, for coming on the show. We're just. Uh, yeah, I'm we're, glad to be here. We're, we're learning all about you. It's wonderful, man. Keep going. It's, yeah. this, this stuff's great. I mean, well, yeah, uh, we, we all have that type of stuff out there. I mean, I, I have, I, I still contend one of the worst interviews ever conducted. Uh, actually, no, that, that might be two now. One that I was the interviewee, one that I was the interviewer. Uh, <laughs> both of those. Uh, the very first time I was ever on any type of show that had anything to do with anarchy or volunteerism or anything like that was when our former co-host Danilo interviewed me on his show uh, like more than a year before we started the podcast. And that was a train wreck and a half. I, oh man! Yeah, it's it, I it's still it was out a train there. Wreck, obviously, I tried. <laughs> I tried to ask. Like, I did half jokingly ask him to take it down a couple of times, and I think he. I think he actually <laughs> considered doing it one time, but then I was just like, oh no, whatever, man. I I gotta own my. I gotta own my stuff. So, but it really was. And I we've actually. I I think I've said this before on the show. I've used it as a training aid for guests that we've had on that have been nervous because they've either never done a show or they haven't done, they never did a video show back when we were still doing video and stuff like that. And I would just tell them to go watch that. And I said, just go watch me make a complete buffoon of myself on Danilo's show and you will feel better about yourself. <laughs> and it has worked every time because yeah. I was so nervous, even though I was talking to this guy who was now like, this, this wasn't just some guy who pulled me off the street to interview me. Like I had become friends with him over the course of a year interacting online and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we shared a lot of the same ideas. And, like I was very comfortable having conversations like that with him, but you put me on there and I was just like a deer in headlights. I said the phrase, you know, before, during and after pretty much every sentence I said, <laughs> it was just, it was brutal. I remember it was so brutal. Like I, and then something day, in my head said, I want to do a show with that guy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why, but yeah, that, I mean, I only ever watched half of it again. I couldn't get past that. And I just, I wanted to cry and I'm like, I can never even watch this thing again, but I point other people to it. It's a great training aid. So that's why I leave it out there, you know, but I can, well, I can understand. I, I've had you on Liberty Lampoon, and I was so freaking nervous that I said you know like a billion times, <laughs> and I actually went through and deleted a lot of them. So there's that, you know. You're never <laughs> supposed to tell people that we make, see. I was, yeah, exactly. You're supposed to make, but yeah, but you. Well, mine is I. I say I mean a lot. So like when I when I hit, listen to my stuff and record it, or I mean have to edit it, I'm sitting there going, "How many times are you gonna say I mean, Dave? Like really?" You got to get that out of here, and like I can't stop it. It's just a tick, I guess. Well, most yeah. most people have certain crutches when it comes to vocabulary that you lean on when you need to think for a second. And the hardest thing to do in those situations, especially when you're doing some type of recording, even if it's not live, it's very hard to instinctually just say nothing and do nothing and just wait for the idea to come to you and let silence happen. Because most of us, I mean, I know I do, and Dave, I know you do, because you act like we're on live radio every time we do a show together. There can't be any silence. Dave's just like, yeah. got to jump in. I've yelled at him for year, for years about this now, but but I but I understand it. You know, when you do this stuff enough, you're you're constantly kind of like in that on mode where you feel the need to fill those silences. And if you're trying, even if you're trying to explain something, it's like. Well, I can't just see, sit here and say nothing. So things like um, you know, well, <laughs> you know, all that stuff comes out, and yeah, yeah, we all have it. It happens. W what annoys me about it though is that I hear it in my like once I notice that I have something like that, uh, I hear myself doing it all the time. Like when I just said uh just now, that stuck out in my head. You know, I don't know. There we go again. A whole bunch <laughs> it, it, for me, we it all depends on this. how many people I'm uh, talking in front of. It, it, recordings and, and podcasts, you know, it's just me and, you know, two guys on the internet talking. Right. I'm a, a lot more semantical and uh, proper when I, the more people I'm around, <laughs> in front of talking. Um, it's um. just it's, <laughs> um. <laughs> the the worst the 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 fewer people I'm around the more sloppy I am because you know it's like it's 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 hard to like put all that brain power into saying everything correctly all the time when 
we're so used to everything being streamlined uh, these days. Like right. language is almost too slow. <laughs> I know what you mean. Dave, so you, I heard like on, I think it was the last show or something, maybe the show before that, uh, you, you said something about you're growing out a beard. It's been a long time or what? How long is your beard right now? How long is it? I haven't actually measured. measured I don't it? have a, a um, let's say this. It goes from my chin all the way down to the middle of my nipples right now. Oh, damn. It's wow. So just imagine your was. chin, just, just go your chin to your nipples. And that's how long my beard is right now. Wow. And I've been growing it two Novembers. So this, this November will be my third November. And you said, you, going, you said, you said you were going to try to go to the uh, the beard uh, competition, the World or, or Beard whatever. Championship. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try to go on the See, the, I, the free beard. The uh, they have a um, a certain section of it. Uh, you know, it's all categorized. You know, like here's the mustache or whatever. But there's one that's like the grand. It's like the big one, and it's basically who's got the best beard genetics. And uh, I'm going to get radical with the you know the the hair growth hormones and stuff or whatever you can rub into your beard. Uh, probably the last year before I go and hopefully try to get a, a real good thick, you know, beard because I think I have the genetics, man. I, I don't have any, uh, spots that are heavily missing. So, yeah, so I, I don't sure know you have a beard? interested in that. Yeah. Well, I, I always shave mine off. I just can't, for some reason yeah. it gets itchy. I, I'm starting to get white in it for, I'm pretty young. I'm not even 30, you know, and and I'm starting to get white hairs like coming out of the sides of my beard. I yeah, here's the way I look at it, right? Like, could you imagine if you went out to the to the Serengeti and you were just walking around and all of the lions were shaved? Like none of them had a mane. <laughs> that's so. Just imagine a lion walking out with walking around without a mane. That's how I look at men that are shaved, man. Like I just, it's almost listen, like listen, you beard a lesser man. You know, <laughs> we've had this conversation before, Dave. You, you know I take issue with this because I can't grow a beard. I would if I could. <laughs> I do have beard envy. We, you know, Dave likes to rub this in, you know, pun intended. Hey, you know, we, we don't get to pick our genetics, okay? I have voice envy. Oh. You have beard envy. It's, it's best just to use what you got with what you got. <laughs> yeah, but the way you're yeah. describing things, I mean, sure, if somebody can grow. Hey, look, I can be a beard elitist asshole. Like, allow well, you me to are, do that, okay? but I'm, all I'm saying is, you know, the way you were descri- <laughs> the way you were describing it, if somebody can grow a nice, luxurious beard and then chooses to shave it off, then I could see your lion analogy. But why are you gonna pick on me and my damn genetics, man? I, I didn't ask for this, man. I did not ask for shitty fucking facial hair. You genetics. can grow it out, man. Just, just keep growing. Dave, I That's tried. All you just I went full motherfucking hobo for like six months and just didn't touch it it was like it was scary like it's mm-hmm. so patchy like you've seen me man like i can grow i can gr- See, i can I actually greek, grow there's a greek guy and like i don't know like in my tree family tree somewhere and that's why i got lucky whatever i i i, I i'm keeping the hair on my head i'm happy enough about that so, all right because i'm about to hit 40 and i'm not losing that so you know what if i can't grow a beard what i can grow unfortunately is you know the the the, the stupid hipster um just along the the jawline skinny ass beard oh, i can actually yeah. grow that that grow that's what grows on me oh, everything like else is, is patchy. Wife beater, like yeah that that's grows a filipino on me. beard bro oh, okay whatever that's you what it's called. okay i okay well you Chin know strap i rock that back in the back of the day because it's the only thing i could freaking grow that's why i go with like the van. everlast <laughs> well yeah but that's that's why i go with the van dyke because that's the only thing that grows in fully on me and it's the only thing that's ever grown in fully on me so that's all i can do well man. you know they just back in the day they made slaves shave that's just how you knew a man was a slave oh. free man could grow beards <laughs> That's, yeah. that's all I'm saying. Like, that's fact. Did you also used to listen to a lot of Limp Biscuit or? No. Just, oh, yeah. Thankfully. Oh, yeah. I have I mean, to who, cut this short. No, no. Who, no. who didn't listen to a lot of Limp Biscuit? If you don't like break stuff on the occasion, like, are you even human? <laughs> I you're having a bad day. Out. Just turn on break stuff and just crank it on up. I promise you by the end of the song, you're not going to have a bad day. Oh, God. I do want to mention that we just glanced right over a microaggression against hobos because oh. uh, did, I, did, I, did I aggress against hobos? Oh, I was yeah, you, I was micro triggered. I didn't really want to bring it up, but thank you yeah. for, for I bringing don't, this. I don't really Jeremy, twisted. do you want to repent to uh, uh, the liberal pope? To uh, no, 
Oh, uh, you know what? It is it is my fault though, because I think at the beginning of last year I gave out a trigger warning, a, a trigger warning at the beginning of the year, and said this was covering it. I think I forgot to give one this year. So as of this, yeah, moment, we just here's do a my whole trigger year of trigger the, warnings in one episode. Here, here's my trigger warning for the year. So hobos, <laughs> get off my back. All right. Get over it. <laughs> Trigger warning for the entire year. If anybody gets mad at us, refer to episode ninety-four. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> man, roll, man, I've been I've been getting called out for like with our show. I, Dave, I don't even know if you've listened to it at all, but we really try to be offensive uh, <laughs> on purpose. Oh, you guys and, were trying. Okay, that makes more sense. Then. I have yeah. a few friends that are doing that with very high success right now. <laughs> right. It's fun to me, and it's not really necess- – it's more so because I really want to offend people on every uh, political sphere or every ideology, everything. You know, I want to mm-hmm. uh, – I, I want You just want to be kinda, air in the offender. Well, no, 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 no. I, it's more so that I want people to not think so highly of all their ideas. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, even You, you even just want to be an iconoclast. Yeah, maybe that's it. I don't know. You That's just want a big to destroy word, everyone's Dave. ideas, it's, man. It's hard for me to to process big words, but it's okay. It's anyway. hard, it's hard for Dave to process them too. That's why he just throws them out all the time. Sometimes Trust they stick, me. other times they don't. Sometimes like they modicum, stick, yeah. That he gets wrong every time. Modicum, flossinock and hillopillification. Whoa. Yeah. Good. Because uh, I don't I don't even know what to do with that one. That one means the estimation of something is worthless. Anyways. Oh. I used it in a Christian rap once. Wow. Um, <laughs> see, now, how, why would you not want the world to see that? That sounds impressive. Now I have to see this. Where is it? I'm going to no. go. It has to be somewhere. It has it's to on be. Acid Planet. I'm oh, telling you. I, don't even I know really don't want to send people there. We're going to have to put that in the show <laughs> notes. I can't get to the actual site, though, because he's I got them all on VHS. My... Don't let him lie. Yeah. Yeah. What? I don't know what that is. He's, dude, he's not even. Th- he's he's younger than you. You think he knows what VHS is? Get the hell out of here! No, I do. I would just. <laughs> my my new thing is like I can I can relate to you if you've watched porn on VHS. That's that's where I'm at in life. <laughs> I can relate to you. <laughs> I can relate to you. you that covers it, a large swath of people, Dave. <laughs> it does, but it I also puts a hard a bookmark bit. on on a lot of people. Like you, there's a certain cutoff on age where. Most likely, you're never going to confront a VHS and a VHS player. That's porn, you know. Like, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm. I mean, let's let's get off the Christian rap slash VHS <laughs> porn. porn. <discussion. laughs> no. Why? Well, um, I, th- I thought we had a show title show title brewing somewhere in there. Oh, I, mean, I thought we just VHS kept going with porn it. and Christian rap. No, oh that's, God. That's not. That's not. That's not catchy enough. I thought we'd stumble onto it if we kept not the catchy enough. It'll it'll pop up. Sometimes <laughs> it just comes out naturally. Like I, I uh, these said that I wasn't going to bring right that up. Naturally. You did say it, but you did. Yeah. Twice. I don't know why. Um, so tell us about Liberty <laughs> Lampoon so, and why and, and why people should be adding this to their RSS feed, man. Okay, so <clears throat> the whole catch line of it is that we lampoon politicians, public figures, policies, and print from a libertarian perspective. Mm-hmm. But uh, as I was saying, you know, I, we want to offend people. The idea is to basically delegitimize people's heroes or masters or policy pushers or who push the narrative in a certain direction. I mean, even if that's libertarian, I don't really You're just care. wanting to start up a shit tsunami and point it in a direction. Right. And, you know, we inject liberty where we can. I mean, every episode, you know, it's not like we just leave it out. But... I'm seeing, you know, this last election, uh, I was seeing people praising Giant Meteor of Death and D's Nuts. Yeah. And that seems like the market calling for like a libertarian shit talking South Park. And that's what we yeah. tried to do with, you know, we, we've done characters. I did, I did an impression of Al Sharpton, literally <laughs> like uh, blackface on a podcast you know yeah and if you need an alex jones you was, just call me okay it, it was, he, we killed him off it actually was really uh, uh, all well, of our I characters can do a lot of voices you just let me know yeah actually after i heard after i killed off alex jones on our podcast it was like christmas special uh i heard your alex jones impression i was like god damn it because i could have probably gotten through to you through like jeremy or something so oh yeah. Like, yeah yeah maybe maybe we could do alex jones flashbacks or something <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. There you go. Well, yeah. Even, where there's yeah. a will, there's a way. Even even Jim Jesus. Listen, I'm coming to you from a dream, Eric. <laughs> oh god. 
I was. You need to buy my water filter before you take the shower or not. You do sound just like him. He, yeah, I mean, Dave. It, it, it's it's it, my girlfriend fucking hates because <laughs> well, I'll just go yeah, hours talking like Alex Jones. Don't talk like that while you're doing it, man. You can't. It's not a turn. Baby, let me tell you something. The way you look tonight, <laughs> it can melt. It can melt the paint hotter than the jet fuel did. <laughs> it makes me want to filter uh, your juices. Uh, through this water filtration. Maybe I got so much v- super male vitality going through me <laughs> right now. Inner offer code, Alex Jones. <laughs> hey, we all crack, but, uh, you know, I, I like Alex Jones. He's passionate about what he does. And, you know, I give him a, a, a look at every so often when he puts out something that's not completely just useless. Yeah, uh, I don't even I, – I don't think I've listened to his show one time. I turned it on, I think, for, like, the intro commercial and – got i don't know what happened but i started seizing a little bit and i had to turn it off so. yeah that'll happen anyways I went back to the... liberty lampoon yeah <laughs> we you know we've been getting accused of being alt-right because it, it seems like we're trying to trigger people but I, I don't understand that because we we have gone after i mean every single ideology or belief i pretty much you know mm-hmm. and and we've also been called liberals and, you know, whatever. I, anything you People can want think, to put you in a box, man, and then we'll walk away like they won. Right. I really think, though, the Libertarian Party uh, has been the worst uh, to us in that any time I post something on, like, the Libertarian page, and I know that it's a Libertarian Party member because you see the Gary Johnson signs, you know, behind their uh, their profile picture or whatever, it's like, we, you know, we made some short clips of joke commercials that we did, uh, making fun of Gary Johnson and Bill Weld, and people would comment like, "Not funny." What would you have us just quit? You know, well, <laughs> like, yeah, like that. Hmm. yes, that's I'm what not saying, I want. Really you know, everybody's like, you did. "What? What's the line that's been going around like the last few weeks?" Trump's got done more. He's done more than the Libertarian Party has in forty years, or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, but if. Like what? What would people be saying if Gary Johnson won? Like, there's, like, if if anything even close to a libertarian got in, like, though it would be like the sky has fallen to these people. Like, they don't even understand. Like, what would even come from like even a quasi libertarian like Gary Johnson? Well, it's not. I'm not trying to put all libertarian party members into a box. I mean, I think it's useless. But me too. I just, I just think that, you know, it's weird that some some party political party that is supposedly associated with a belief system that i hold it has been harsher towards me than say a conservative or a uh, or a liberal you know and actually conservatives even more so i think have been hostile be, just because we kind of went after the church a little bit and and franklin graham and you know well that'll uh, do it yeah they, they, t- they take that stuff kind of seriously. If you're going to come after religion, you have to come at it with logic, in my opinion. If you, if you tr- because they don't want a logical debate. If you come at it any other way, then you're, you're barking up their alley. You're giving them an emotional heel to die on, exactly what they want. So it's a big well, mistake. Well, the point that I was making, but the, see, the point that I made was uh, with Franklin Graham was like, uh, all of a sudden he wants to involve God in the process of a political election or something like that. And, you know, I did, a, I set up fake prayer, basically. Um, I guess it was pretty blasphemous now that I think about it. Well, I mean, but, if uh, you're going to get, if you're going to, you have to ride, you have to rustle feathers, man. People, it's like people don't understand that controversy creates cash. Like for some reason, they just don't get that in their head. And so like when people are talking about you, that's good. It doesn't matter right. if it's negative or positive what they're discussing, unless you're raping children. No yeah. one wants to. Yeah, we only do that a couple of times a week. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's it's the far. No, no, I'm talking about like if mind. somebody's if somebody's talking about you in the in in the light of like, hey, you might be possibly raping children. That's not the press you want. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, we don't actually do that. But almost so. all other negative press is amazing. People yeah. just don't get that. <laughs> I mean, it was more so like. Just saying, hey, it's weird that you pray. You're like praying for the death penalty in Oklahoma, and you're pr- you're praying for uh, people who don't believe in your belief system to to 
you know, be forced at gunpoint to pay for the Ten Commandments statue going up. Uh, and then you're like upset when the Satanists want to put Baphomet up, you know, I don't know. It just, I was just making the point of the hypocrisy, you know, there, it's okay for us to set up firing lines to shoot, uh, you know, people, but also we want our freedom of religion. You know, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like your religion supposedly believes that, <sighs> You know, there's re- if, I don't if know, there's whatever. a st- if there's a state where you're at, you, you, that's your religion. By right. the way, like that's like you may call yourself something else, but you're forced to obey and essentially call master the state. Yeah, which is you know breaking a lot of commandments and a lot of rules and a lot of religions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're all about. Uh, just trying to have fun. Kind of do it Shit in a comical everyone. sense, yeah. But it's it's supposed to be like funny, you know. That's what we really want people to get out of it is just kind of relax. And I've gotten some good messages back, you know, like from friends, leftists. I've gotten a lot of actual comments from some uh, liberal people that I know who say it just makes them. It helps them relax a little bit about all this you know and that's what that's something that i'm cool with because that gives me an in to you know maybe speak some truth i guess so well sure yeah that's a that's if you yeah if you have that opening why not take it but i mean yeah i i'm i am i mean i've told you before i am a fan of your show i listen every week and Actually, I don't think I've... Did I do this week's yet? No, I don't think... Cause it just came out like two days ago, right? So, yeah, it comes out on Tuesday. It was so. wishy-washy, dude. I don't, think I, I don't think I've gotten to it yet. But no, you... I And actually, I, I just turned two other people onto your show uh, just this week because it came up in conversation and it's because somebody was talking about the fact that they like to listen, but because of other things they have to do, they have a hard time listening to the more serious podcast where they know they would gain a lot more information, but they can't focus... So they right. prefer to listen to more lighthearted things, and I was, you know, because they had ar- they already listened to the Freedom Fiends, and I'm like, well, that's that was kind of the reason the Fiends were always at the top of my list even before I became a Fiend because it was my go to show when I couldn't concentrate because <laughs> you can miss a thing like a word here or there. It's not the end of the world if you're not trying to learn something. If you're just trying to have fun, and you know, I mean, you still learn things along the way, but you know, and then your show is perfect for that too because I, I love to listen to it. You do, you guys make me laugh. And uh, especially when uh, Michael, you know, mimics you and drives you up a wall because it would drive me up a wall. I mean, I know you guys are kind of like part of your shtick now, but <laughs> when, yeah. he copies, when he copies all the things he said. And who was that yeah. you did the show with? Uh, Andrew, what was his name that you had? Andrew Wacker. Yeah, he's a um, uh, he's the liberal I was talking about. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I remember you guys saying you didn't really hmm. agree ideolo- ideologically. Yeah. But, but we found some common ground, and the reason that I did that is, well, mainly because I couldn't find anybody to do a show with. <laughs> but uh, secondly, uh, there's this there's this message out there that I've been hearing constantly uh, from. It's in the liberty movement pretty hard, where it's like we can't live uh, in the free society that we want. There cannot be like liberals you know what i mean like Leftists, they cannot yeah. exist side by side with us what yeah well or, or the larger term leftist is usually what it's yeah turned right into. that that's yeah. i'm sorry i keep they misappropriate that term. a, a yeah. portion of a hop quote to do that yeah yeah but to me i keep the way that i keep looking at it is like we need to it, everybody needs to be considered as individuals i know that groups are useful you know i know that it's easy to to use that to group people together or whatever but as you i mean if you heard me with uh, andrew you know we talked about war we both hate war you know mm-hmm. we talked uh, we talked about uh drug legalization uh, well legalization you know whatever Th- they shouldn't be criminalized right mm-hmm. uh, and you know those were a couple things that we could agree on and really that's the way that I look at this whole stupid ass left versus right thing. And I don't even know why it's a part of the libertarian message, but whatever. But <laughs> I have this, I have this theory, you know, people always say that it's a pendulum swinging back and forth, like right versus left, you know, uh, every so often it swings to the right. Every so often it swings to the left. And I don't know if you've ever heard this, but I have this theory that it's actually more like a compass. You know what that is? Like in geometry, what a compass is mm-hmm. sure. like, 
it's two points and they're connected in the middle and you know you use it usually there's a pencil on one end and yeah. you use it to draw a circle mm -hmm. well i had this idea that it's like you start at the bottom of the page and one side's the left obviously the left leg of the 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 compass and the other is the right side of the compass and so they swing past each other as it moves forward so it looks like it's a pendulum swinging back and forth but it's really authoritarianism walking towards the cliff you know like it's it's they're working together they're conjoined in the middle but it's not really they're not really separate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would you you understand that like yeah, does that make sense i can see what you're saying so <laughs> like we have to get outside of that you know we can't just continue to play by yeah. those rules or whatever my and, my, my left and so. right is completely different than I, I guess what most people would consider their when they say left and right so like to me like a rightist is somebody that does not advocate any market aggression at all any aggression in the marketplace at all zero so pure capitalism so a leftist is uh, any variant of someone who wants aggression in the marketplace for whatever reason, whether it be for roads or military or armies or everything. That is leftism. Just we're talking about difference of degree. So right. when someone gets called a leftist, it means they want aggression in the marketplace. Someone who wants aggression in a marketplace in privately owned you know, like villages or whatnot, they cannot be there. They're going to be removed because what they're advocating for is people not to own their property. Uh, so that's all that quote is, is trying to say, and that's what all these people are trying to push this narrative for. And that's all the argument is, is to kind of get people to wake up to this whole thing that, you know, hey, supporting leftist ideologies is aggression and it is bad. And if things go privatized, your ass will be gone. Those are right. just facts. Right. Yeah. I mean, that may be that may be the case. And it's hard but to call someone an individual. And I'm one of these people that says only individuals act religiously. I say this in my head a thousand times a day. It's hard to say that when a thousand motherfuckers put on masks, cover up everything, yeah. grab flags and run around and try to start burning shit down. What, what that's not an individual right there. That's a bunch of people that are rejecting their individuality to destroy property. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I don't see those things. You know, I I see those things happening, and I understand the that marketing there is, is what you're discussing. Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying that if if the idea is that there these people are to be completely given up on, uh, I mean, it then it's never you know I mean what I'm sure that I don't there's think you people give up on anybody. Yeah, right. You well, don't, but I, I'm sure there's people who look at libertarians and say the same thing. You of know, course. So. But there, but there's also, you know, there's the, you know, getting back to the whole groups and, and groupings and, 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 you know, you said it earlier and they are useful in certain situations. And yes, you know, what you're, what you just described, Dave, with, the, you know, the black black block type people who seemingly have no issue with destroying private property just because they see it as corporatism and that's all that matters to them. But they're also a much smaller percentage of the whole you know when when you try to make it th that binary when you try to look at it as well the rightest is even if it's just your personal definition but fine you're making it so binary that this these are rightists. this is this is the one thing that defines them the that, reason that makes i did that, it so binary is because it helps better describe the current political but paradigm it, but yeah but hold on it, it okay but it really doesn't though because it's it, the current political paradigm is defined not by but it's not by it, we're not defined by the current we don't get to define the current paradigm we're heavily outnumbered they define it the way well, that they I mean, see as it a, you know and, and, when and you're currently it's right and left philosophy but but what, what i'm saying is when you when you do that and then you also agree with all these other people that if they want to take that quote the hop quote or just that idea to the extreme like the whole you know the helicopter crowd basically if you want to agree with them as well well then you know what you're lumping everybody together because that's how they that's how that outlook that that's the end game of that outlook where you see everybody as who's on a leftist no matter what the degree as unreachable and more you know, and more I mean, people. Well, hold on. More, like, more and more people are, are are seeing this openly now, and it's really getting quite sickening. Because aside from myself and Danilo and people like Eric July, I know a lot of other prominent people that are, are libertarians or and or just straight out anarchists now that all came from the left originally, and some were actual Marxists. 
like admitted proud Marxist, not just useful idiot leftists like well, I was. On my spectrum, everyone came from the left unless you're an anarcho capitalist from the but get. Again, but again, they, you, so, but, but like I said, when you combine those two things together and you agree with both of them, then you necessarily cut out a, a huge swath of, of, of any population that you're not even, will, you're openly admitting that you're to the not even be oh, willing I agree. to work with. Lumping people together and saying, but that's what, uh, you know, we shouldn't even, but that's, uh, but that's what they're saying. And I don't agree with that. But you're, but you're you're missing what I'm saying. You're agreeing with them on everything else on this whole idea. You're missing the intersection there that you're you're actually inadvertently agreeing to as well. It's not. It's it's not and a. Then I agree I, with I Aaron. Agree it's not healthy. Percent with with someone, I can. Well, you know, I, it's not. I don't. I just don't think that we should try to identify so closely with the economic right or uh, or the socially liberal or whatever the fuck you know leftist. I, I think no, that's a, a big waste of time. Thing. And I, I think, I think that it, the the goal should be for us to figure out what we do in our own lives to increase our freedom. You know, proselytize where you can. But I just, I don't see the value in throwing your lot in with someone just because the alternative is unbearable. And that's what I've heard a lot of lately. Is like I see a lot of people that are part of the libertarian movement, like kind of just. I'm okay with the all right, you know, <laughs> like, and so it's, it's weird to me because I want, I think that people should, you know, we should be open to, to p individuals from any group in it, it, trying to I get to them. It. But I don't think that we should just automatically assume that there's these alternatives are good or anything. They both want to use the force of the state in some way, shape or form. So. Absolutely. The, the main reason the the ones in the libertarian movement that are trying to plead to these alt riders, if you will, you know, just accept the colloquialism there. Yeah, they're I'm sorry it because it's <laughs> talking about you know, like no groups and then throwing around no, no, terms no, no, no. like alt right. But yeah, yeah, no, it, it it that that's an economic stance. The alt riders, it's it's majoritably an an economic stance. You can do all this Western culture stuff behind it as well, but. Most of all of that is economic, is what it is. Well, it's an no. economic reaction to communism. It's, it's not purely economic, though. It's not purely economic because the all. It's like, not purely, but it's it's, but, it's largely based. But on... But no, because again, this this is the thing. I've been trying to tell you this for the longest time, and you keep ignoring me. The alt right is not this abstract thing that is that it the, the, the name has now become. It had a very specific purpose when Spencer coined the term. They were all about, they were straight up admitted proud white nationalists. That is what, that, that is the overarching thing behind the actual alt-right movement. All these idiots that keep willingly attaching them their name to it and going, we're all the alt-right now or whatever this bullshit is, have no idea about this. And most often when it's presented to them, they shrug it off as liberal media bias bullshit. No, that's the actual fucking story. I don't know. Right. These people about Richard. Oh, no, no, see, no. exactly. But, miss, but I, I hate to break it to you, man. But, but mister, I need to know everything about everything before I talk about it. Yeah, you didn't. I've been trying to warn you about this for the longest time. You don't listen. That's why all these idiots out there that keep attaching themselves are making complete buffoons of themselves and or actually really proving their fucking racist tendencies. And that's not liberal yeah. fucking SJW bullshit. That's motherfucking I, legit because you've just attached yourself to America's fucking largest nat white national fucking movement, you fucking idiots. Christopher well, Cantwell, national, Christopher Cantwell, who a bunch of these idiots are still following, has gone full blown motherfucking white oh, yeah. nationalist. Yeah, that's definitely and accurate. and he fucking he became a fucking meth addict and fucking like and these people are still I cheering still, these fucking people. No, no, I, still don't I thought he was he kidding. I totally like thought I, I, I think okay, he's a cop. he's not a cop. I know he's not a cop. He traveled in the same circles with as me here on Long Island for two plus years before he moved up to New, before he moved up to New Hampshire, and then I hung out with him a couple of times after he came back. I know he's not a fucking cop. Well, I'm never going to agree with a socialist and white nationalism is national socialism. Basically. But OK, but that's what that's what the alt right is. Some of the economic stances they make, though, that the alt writers, quote unquote, make uh, like no skinhead would ever agree with ever. It's like, yo, we want free markets. And but again, they're not skinheads. They're not neo-Nazis. They're white nationalists. It's a different. There's a difference. 
yeah, I think Jim Jesus is like the best at explaining. Oh, yeah, again, that's why I had. That's why we had. That's why we had him up. We didn't get to get touch on enough of this stuff. He's like. Jim's excellent at this because he was obs- he became obsessed years ago with cults and he ended up wanting to learn everything there was to know about them and what to look for and examine all like and he's done a lot of research on this stuff and that's why when he says you know when somebody's like oh that's a cult and everybody's like no they're just they're just saying that and then i go to jim and he's like well it's like okay now i want to listen because what do you got because it's like when you look into this stuff but that's what it is they, they're not like because richard spencer spencer claims that the neo-nazis hate him and that would make sense because at least if their claims are legit they're just nationalists they're not not they're not neo-nazis because they don't want to exterminate the black people they just don't want to live with them <laughs> the black or the brown That's people. Perfectly, they just, I, I know it sounds crazy, but discrimination. Oh no, and I'm not moving it, yourself away from it's people not, in it's, society. is totally in line with libertarianism. And property rights has exclusion as number one tendon. Like it has to happen. Yeah, people don't want to live. And how with do you other acquire? People. How do you acquire that pop? How do you acquire that property when the majority of the population wants nothing to do with you? Because regardless of whether you think you're right or not. How is is it legitimate? Yes. See, every see, this is the problem with people who read and read and read and read and only read Mises and Hop and Rothbard and stuff like that, and don't and then become the become the living embodiment of the of the joke that people like me actually started, the Asperger Terrians, because I actually am one. But I started it as a joke. But these people become even more so because they so, become so disconnected from fucking reality because all they do is talk, is live, breathe, and talk about motherfucking theory. They don't pay attention to what actually goes on in the world. They don't account for those fucking variables because, well, they've become essentially motherfucking robotic. And this is coming from somebody who is on the goddamn scale, who is on the goddamn scale was robotic for for a good portion of his life had to teach himself empathy i can see all this stuff because i fucking had to i had to reverse engineer it to become normal like the rest of you so when i say stuff like this like people just look at me and fucking laugh and i'm like i can fucking see it because i see it happening i know exactly what it like they don't nobody has any fucking clue they all, it's all fucking theory to them that's why they make fun of the agorist people like me who are actually trying to do this shit in real time and doing it right now and saying, fuck you, government, come and get us. Right. You know, like, but they, they make I, fun I of us. I don't understand that. They make fun of us. We're, 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 we're just, we're just leftists all because Konkin, who wasn't, Konkin was a fucking nut job, man. He came up, he, he, he put together a really good idea based on other things he had learned from other people. And then the, the, the next person to pick it up was, was, uh, J. Neal, uh, L. Ron Hubbard Sh- Schulman, whatever the hell that guy, that idiot's guy, the guy who the guy who wrote who wrote the really good book alongside Night that he turned into the most horrible movie of all fucking time, and who who d- declares himself to be some kind of capitalist agorist, but he you know right. he, he's he's hardcore for IP and stuff like that. So are there people involved in that? There were, I guess, what they anybody else would classify as a leftist or a left libertarian. Sure. Does that mean the philo- that, does that mean the philosophy has to stay that way? No, because it could be adopted. It's all about all it, the, the, the just the main tenant is essentially counter economics. It's just mm-hmm. it, and, and right. it, it, it's it, it's a practical way to put the ideas and the well, theories it, it, of anarcho capitalism into yeah. practice right now. For for you for you personally, you know, I mean that that's what that's kind of like what I'm saying is to me it seems to be the best idea for uh, for individuals who believe in all this stuff to try to make freedom for their, themselves. You know what I mean? That's. That's where I'm at, anyways. I, I want freedom in as soon as possible, and you can get it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would, you don't have to fucking yeah. move to Unless New Hampshire. You have to be pragmatic, pragmatic in, in involvement with the state. Like other than that, yeah. Like do as much as you can without the state. You're right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't. I didn't mean to like open a can of worms or something. No, if I it's did. all right. I thought. For, I thought for sure that this was going to be like probably, you know the dick and fart joke episode of, of liberty but <laughs> yeah this shit. has been bubbling in me for a while so <laughs> was, you, you, yeah you get jeremy fired up and it's just it's like fireworks this is fire. what dave wants this is this is what dave has always wanted for me he said it multiple times yeah. i think he said it on the show you know yeah i people had a joke. don't want to hear uh 
you know, people that are just droning on and on. They want to hear fired up people basically preaching. They want to hear a preacher, and it's hard to stay that fired up twenty four seven. But I'm not. Right. Oh, yeah, but I don't want to. I'm, I'm not trying to preach. <laughs> I know. I'm, just, I'm, 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 I'm admitting. I'm, 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 I'm obviously emotional different. about this. I've, I've gotten, you know, this gets me heated because I've been dealing with it for too long now. And when you're somebody like me who's heated. been out here preaching, let's, let's do this stuff now. And let's, hey, let's work with pretty much whoever we can to try to further this. Because you know what? I got a whole motherfucking bunch of skin in the game right now because I got my kids, you know, besides me. So, you know what? I'm really trying and I, you know, why don't we do this? It, okay, great. But now it's just so many people have gotten sucked back into the left right divide again. And it, it's it's hard, right? Because anarcho capitalism, like think of the most right wing political ideology, like think of Pinochet. Anarcho capitalism is like further right than him. So it's gonna attract people that have ill qualities and pariah like tendencies. But it's it not just even, is. It's not. It, it has nothing to do with that. Any ideology will attract whatever, because what what pe- what what the so, what the true so- sociopaths of society want is not always the same. So they'll just they'll find what works for them, and that's what they'll go after. All I'm saying is, is every racist in the world became an anarcho capitalist overnight. It'd be better. Right. Yeah. Messaging to that crowd might not be a negative thing. I mean. Once again, I said any group. I mean, really, I just don't think that we should throw our lots in with them. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that we should like uh, saddle up with them. I don't, no, because it's, it, it is socialism, building a, a nation around a collective identity of race and then, you know, making that state, uh, you know, perfect for the, you know, that race. I mean, it's not it's a pipe. It's a lie. Yeah. And, you know, the biggest contradiction of all is if you look at all the books that are written for socialism, they're all written by Jews. It, it doesn't even make sense why uh, it, it is a big confusion for, for me, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, I was going to come on here. I think the first thing I was going to say, Michael, my co-host on Liberty Lampoon, wanted me to uh, send a message to, to everybody on Seeds of Liberty. You guys, you two. Uh Something about uh, Dave, your beard looks like a great place for him to rest his uh, ball sack. So, um, hmm. I don't know what that means. But, uh, okay. He said that. No, I didn't. You don't know him. That's, don't worry. That's, that's I tell pretty... him I'm, I, I, I sleep with a gun in my hand. That, that's, see, I mean, I, I don't know. That just doesn't sound like something... So you're into kinky shit. That's Michael. That no, like he'll be missing a ball sack if he tries that. Is what I'm <laughs> no, he didn't actually say that. I, I just wanted to put those words in his oh, mouth. Oh, that, that makes more he'll sense. listen to this, and I I've want got him beef to, with him now. I have beef yeah. with him now. I'm starting now. A now you're gonna a, get your ASAP. co-host killed. Way Re- to go, Aaron. That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it, it wouldn't Dude. be the worst. I would have to find a new co-host. Maybe one that doesn't echo me all the fucking time. <laughs> Jesus. Well, actually, isn't isn't anyway, he the for- Colossus of Clout? Wasn't he former military though? Maybe he could take Dave. I don't know. Oh yeah, he is. He is. He's a former Marine. So. Oh, Dave, you're you're screwed, man. I wouldn't. Maybe, maybe you should just let, <laughs> maybe you should just let maybe you should just let the nice. A bully doesn't put give his- a shit what you are, especially if it's a nutsack. <laughs> I was gonna say, That's another thing. Maybe I wanted to ask you guys something. So, so actually, probably I'd be better at, off asking like veteran anarchy or something. But General Mattis is the uh, def- the Secretary of Defense, I guess, or whatever. Yes. I don't know. And you know, he's a psychopath, <laughs> like Mad- straight oh, up. Who, Mad Dog, isn't that his nickname? Yeah, that's his name. Yes. Yeah, he's wild. <laughs> but but he is straight up. I I've seen so many libertarian, like uh, you know, former Marines that still like have mad respect for him. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And and that. Like, I don't know what to think about that because I can't even talk about the guy on our podcast because, you know, I want to lampoon him, right? Mm -hmm. But I can't even bring him up because it's not that, you know, Michael would just go to bat for him. And I don't really really want to put that out in a podcast, you know, Uh, like a libertarian podcast with a guy saying he loves the Secretary of Defense, you know? Wow. Maybe, 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 maybe we're in murky waters right now, Aaron. There's a lot yeah. of people that think they're libertarian. They really, 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 yeah. really do. But they've yeah. never read a book. They've 
And I, I know that isn't a that's an appeal or whatever, but they never read any of the of the philosophy to to really understand what it is. It's like ninety percent of Christians have really never read the Bible. I'm sure it goes for every other religion. So, if they're libertarians now, is that not such a? Is, they is were that most a bad likely thing? in that position because of that guy's commands. So yeah. right. All right. So th- well, that was freaky. We just had a recording snafu. Sorry, Dave. Didn't mean to cut you off like that, but. I think you were saying that people still had this attachment, you know, or to uh, residual uh, statism. Residual state. or, or it was Stockholm syndrome. It was leftover Stockholm syndrome. That's what it and was. And then, and then, Jeremy, you made the point that it's kind of the same thing as like when a family member is, you know, uh, yeah, still. Go ahead. Oh yeah, well yeah, because Dave, you, I mean, I think you were alluding to the, the fact that it's Stockholm syndrome. I, I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. I was trying. I guess maybe I was trying to be less harsh. <laughs> maybe I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and just say that may, maybe it's just viewing it as like a close, even if they weren't close to him personally. But it's that like respect thing. I mean, if you have somebody in your life like that, are you, are you very likely to give, you know, look at them with the same critical eye as you are anybody else? You know, I know I'm. I'm sure I'm guilty of it plenty of times. I, I I see most people usually fall into that. You know, it's hard. You know, just no matter how principled yeah. you are, no matter how there can be a lot of cognitive dissonance there. Well, but it it's I get to an extent, but I, I again I think it's just more of a of an attachment thing. Like you you feel if you have some type of bond with another human being that you feel a connection to, that you feel love for, whatever that you or respect or whatever it is, like it's harder it's, for you to be critical of them. It, I think yeah. it, I think that's part of human nature, at least the way we're currently constructed, or the the majority of us. It seems, you know, it's just it, right. I I to be fair though, I do think I'm a little bit over exaggerating Michael's opinion about uh, that's my co-host, uh, his opinion about the guy. But it's just an interesting thought process that you know, because he's not the only. Like I said, he's not the only libertarian I've seen. Kind of you know, have maybe a touch of hero worship for the guy, you know, and it's just very interesting to me. Um, to Fascism see that. and libertarian aren't too far off the spectrum. They really aren't. Oh, no, no, I do not want to hear the whole, we yeah. got to go through the keyhole of fascism. <laughs> the keyhole. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I'm not going to say that, but fascism is usually built around hero worship. And um, I mean, if you read all the fascist doctrines, it's usually, hey, we just really need the right hero in. <laughs> right. Uh, Okay, so I mean, there's not much difference like that. between that and, and you know a guy owning a, his own kingdom. You know, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to start calling kingdom, it. We we got to go. We got to go through the pee hole of uh, of of uh, of uh, fascism to get to liberty. We got to get through the dick hole of uh, <laughs> fascism, guys. Yeah. What Anyways. I think we have to do is just hope this thing collapses under its own weight, and we can go in and set up. Uh, places where they're gonna, not going to be able to it's not going to happen like that it never does they don't they they because they the the more dire it gets for the people who still have the power the more the more they you know grasp out and and strike harder and do whatever they can it just gets worse it doesn't actually just die out like that that's that that i, I mean I, I've gotten accused of having that it's thinking. So plenty, days, right? plenty of plenty of libertarians and so-called anarchists accuse me of that all the time. That I believe that I, the state's just going to go away on its own. It's like, no, that's that's not what I believe at all. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm talking about actively working to stop the state, but doing it right now instead of sitting around and theorizing it about all the fucking time and talking about what if and still trying to make use of the political system because it seems a lot of people latch onto Rothbard. Well, Rothbard did this and Rothbard did this. Did Rothbard get anywhere? No. <laughs> he helped well, a bunch he, of us a couple gen- no, he helped a, here. he helped a bunch of us a couple generations later to really take these ideas and start running with them, but not everything he said and it's it's one thing to follow in somebody's footsteps. It's another thing to keep making their same mistakes. <laughs> Because yeah. he yeah. didn't get very. Remember fun. when Rothbard appeal, appealed, appealed to, to the, the left, left, failed, took him, took him, took him quite a while to finally realize it, give up, and say, okay, that was a bad idea. Guess what? He didn't actually give up on the populism. He died. He never got <laughs> anywhere with it, though. So the fact that everybody's emulating him is fucking retarded. <laughs> exactly, blows right. my mind. <laughs> so, like, brilliant economist, 
pretty damn good historian too. Interesting motherfucker. Like I think he, it was like great looking eyebrows too. Thing. Fantastic eyebrows. Thing. Fantastic eyebrows. I think state involvement for early libertarians was pragmatic. And I think it still is pragmatic for most lib- libertarians. If they had the choice, they wouldn't pick the they wouldn't pick the state involvement. But it doesn't have to be. Yeah. They not have the choice. They're the just not waking up understanding. There's people that understand this much better than me that aren't doing it. So that that's not I don't right. that I don't buy that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just still it's like at the end of the day you still have to use their roads you still have to use all this other stuff it's like now we're just setting arbitrary well no things why on. not you're you st- i still use them yeah i just say here's the, my limits with what the, i'm going to involve myself with the state the roads I, are paid the I roads the, the road at least what they always touted to the american public was that the roads are paid for by your gasoline taxes and tolls and stuff like that so what blows my mind is like I have most to pay for that because they freak out. Don't if even I... think about how crazy uh, private roads would be. Like you wouldn't even be able to get off the exit onto like a private interstate without a breathalyzer pass or something. <laughs> the insurance would be that nuts. No, and, and I get would... no, wh- I, no, it wouldn't, Dave. I mean, I don't want. I don't want to get. Into, I don't want to get too deep into this because we're get, we're running kind of late on time. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know Aaron has to go, but maybe next week. Yeah, maybe next week. But I, I don't. I don't really see that being the case because. Yeah, I we, need to indoctrinate my child because. It's yeah. time for bed. Yeah, so. he needs to be indoctrinated by watching uh, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood because apparently that's a communist show. I didn't <laughs> realize that, but I've my kids never got into that, so I don't know. But actually, that's not it's true. It's the follow up. It's a follow. It's the. It is literally the world of imaginary land from Mister Rogers. Yeah, actually, you know, I, yeah, I was about to say I take that back because now I remember they do act. That's what communism it from time can time. work, Aaron. Yeah, it is actually. Everybody just gets to go and pick all the strawberries they want out of the garden. And, everything, uh, everything works in imagination land. King yeah. Friday. Well, listen, you know, <laughs> we've been talking this whole show about people who are just who just keep running on theory and not actually trying to put anything into practice. I don't think mocking people who live in ima- imagination land is the best thing for you to do right now, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in imagination land. On that here. note. On that note, <laughs> let's get wrapping up so we can get Aaron out of here. Aaron, it's been great having you on, man. Thank you for putting up with my rant. Thank you for coming on. Uh, and thanks for uh, being part of this discussion. So plug away, my friend, and uh, say anything you want to say before we get closing up. Plug away, yeah. Well, I'll, we talked about porn earlier, so I won't go there. But uh, go to you can go to libertylampoon.com and find all of our socials. And, uh, and you know, where to subscribe to us, where to listen to us and all that. Just LibertyLampoon.com. Uh, I think that's the best place. So Perfect. All so right. that's like a National Lampoon, but Liberty Lampoon? Oh, God. <laughs> You're the Liberty version of it? Are we going to yeah. start having video or movies coming out that are just all libertarian and cat bent? Yeah, uh, I've been... I've been speaking with the guy who did Alongside Night about oh, God, getting no. something together. <laughs> Get him and the guy that made Trolls 3. He can't, he, oh, yeah. my Lord. Well, it can't be he worse than Alongside Night. So he, he won't stop talking about Michael W. Dean, though. So apparently, <laughs> there's still blood in the water there. Oh, so. he, and he, I'm, I'm surprised he dropped my name from like, I didn't even like, I barely got involved with him. He hated me with a passion quickly, though. Apparently, he listened to a bunch <laughs> of shows where Michael and I were talking about him. <laughs> so, anyway. But. Yeah. All right. So thanks again, Aaron, for coming on. Uh, no problem. Dave, it's been fun as always. This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at the Seeds of Liberty.com. And we will catch you next time. Peace. Seeds of Liberty. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at Get Cell. 411.com that's get cell 411.com are you sick of
government lackeys who say you didn't build that. Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.